I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. Welcome back, folks. This is part of a series of videos that we do each year where we talk about games that we recommend that you get for people for Christmas. Uh, most of these games, we try to pick games that are available online. Uh, check out our sponsor, Cool Stuff Inc., to purchase these. This time we're picking family games or casual games, games that offer some good choices, mm -hmm. are a lot of fun to play, but won't necessarily tax your brain to exhaustion. I hope. True. At least mine don't. That's True. the idea. All right, well, I guess with that being said, let's get started. My first pick is a game called Micropolis in which you are going to have your own colony of ants and you are going to be drafting tiles to build up that colony of ants. Each of those tiles might have a special power. You are going to gather new ants that come into your colony. You have soldiers that allow you to skip specific tiles and gather the one you want. And the way this uh, ant hill develops is really clever. I love the way that works because you start with the center and then as soon as you play one tile onto that colony, you can either develop it to the right or to the left of that tile, making different paths within that colony, uh, putting a queen into play, making sure that she scores you a lot of points, uh, and managing several things, but it all works very smoothly. And again, you are just so going to be drafting tiles scoring victory points. I love the way this game looks. I really like the components. I like everything about it and it scales quite well. It's going to play all the way down to two players. I think all the way up to six. So this one's going to go over well no matter how big of a group you are playing with. So Micropolis, my first pick. My first family game pick is a game called Ice Cool. Now, Ice Cool is a game where you're going to be flicking little penguins around a uh, high school made out of ice, and you are going to be <laughs> you're going to what what you're actually doing is you're you're cutting class to go get yourself some snacks and those snacks are hanging from the doorways and you have to flick your penguin through the doorway once you're able to do that you can take one of your fish off of that doorway and you're trying to collect all of your fish before everybody else does and before the hall monitor catches you because hall monitors out there and if you get caught well you're pretty much done Snitch. but it's it's all a it's all about scoring points, but it's really more about getting the right flick on that penguin to make sure it goes through as many doorways in one shot as you possibly can. And that's one of the fun things about it is getting those trick shots down. So that's my first family pick, Ice Cool. Incidentally, if you see Ice Cool 2, it's the exact same yes. game, and you can even mix them. They're, yeah. just, they're just different colors. You all. can buy both and make one huge game, or mix and match, it's whatever you'd like. You ever feel bad for the witch who tried to eat Hansel and Gretel? Well, Gingerbread House is for you. Oh In Gingerbread House, you are a witch, and basically what's happening is people are coming by and eating your house all day long. And you're like, I had enough of this. You put people in cages. So in, in this one, you're building uh, uh, basically these little domino tiles, and you're placing them and trying to score points and get different treats that will attract different fantasy creatures. Maybe the three pigs, maybe Hansel and Gretel, maybe the another Wicked Witch. <laughs> you know, get them to come in your house, and then you get points for them. It's very simple, and you're just placing the tiles, building them up. It's a really well-designed game that's just really easy to play and takes maybe 30 minutes. Lots of fun. Gingerbread House. Also a good game for Christmas time. Nice, yeah. But let's say during Christmas time, what you want to do is sit down and, and solve some puzzles, do some deduction. Well, then Cryptid is a good choice for you. In this game, you are trying to figure out where this uh, mysterious creature is out there on this board, made up of different land types and having different monuments. Everybody's going to have partial information as to where this creature dwells, but you are going to be uh, putting out guesses and trying to deduce as the other players tell you uh, what they know, partly, uh, so that you can figure out exactly the one spot that that creature is in. Now, the theme here is fairly pasted on. I wouldn't go into it thinking, oh, it's a monster hunting game. But again, if you do want to solve the puzzle of uh, deduction that this game offers, it's definitely a good pick. Cryptid is my pick. 
My next pick for family game is a game called Dragon Castle. Now, Dragon Castle is a beautifully produced game uh, with these little Mahjong-esque tiles uh, that you're going to be setting up the board in different configurations, all explained in the rule book. And uh, you're basically simply trying to collect different sets, get them to turn over so that you can put one of your little um, roof sections on top of it, scoring points uh, for doing all of this little stuff. It is a very light uh, strategy game. So light that it does, doesn't even fit in our regular strategy thing. That's why I put it in the family strategy because it's just that simple. And it looks great on the board. It is a It would make a wonderful present uh, for anybody in your family, really. Dragon Castle. All right, I got Azul Stained Glass of Sintra. This is a game in which this is a sequel to the first Azul, and in fact, if it says Azul and you've never played one, get either one. They're great fun, both of them. Uh, you're putting tiles on boards, and you do so by grabbing some tiles from the middle of the table, which will cause tiles to move to another spot. And players are trying to grab groups of them, but you don't want too many. Sometimes you'll get too many, and then you're forced to lose points. And this game works really well with two, all the way up to four players. All those player counts, there's nice interaction back and forth where you can really mess over the other players. At the same time, it's really satisfying to watch these tiles go in. So one is like some wall tiles. The other one is stained glass. They're both really cool looking. They're both easy to learn and play, but they have more strategy than you might think. But the, the, I'm just picking stained glass of Sintra because it's the newer version. That's Azul. Very nice. Now, Istanbul is a very thinky, heavy strategy game, one that's got a lot going on. But the game did come out, uh, they did come out with a sequel to that game that turns it into a much simpler dice game. So Istanbul, the dice game, is my pick here. And in this one, you are continuing the same thematic tropes as in the first one. Walk around a market, a bazaar, and gather different goods. Turn those things in for gems and get the most gems you win the game. But in this one, you're just rolling dice, gathering resources, gathering money, getting special abilities, so that now when you roll dice, you get to roll an extra die. Or whenever you collect this one type of thing, you get an extra one. The whole thing has a real quick, simple, breezy flow to it. I enjoy it very much. Uh, again, not really like the original game because that one's very thinky. But if you enjoy the theme and you're looking for something you can play with just about anybody, the dice game for Istanbul, I think, is going to fit the bill. I like dice. My next pick for family is Celestia. Now, Celestia is a game where you are all in this airship and you're trying to maneuver from one spot or location to the next. And it's a, uh, you keep going up in elevation and it continues to get harder from one space to the next. What you're doing to get from one space to the next is you're rolling dice. And when you roll dice, you have to pay uh, certain kinds of cards out of your hand in order to move from one space to the next. Not that difficult of a situation, but Celestia is a beautiful production. It has great artwork, much better than what was it, Cloud Nine or something to that effect? Sure. The original looked horribly. This one looks really great, very nice, has a great expansion as well where people can help uh, the captain uh, make it from one spot to the next if he's having some difficulty. Uh, really great game, um, dice rolling fun. Working together, Celestia. Reef is a fun game with some really cool pieces made by the same people who made Azul, actually, where you're going to be taking reef pieces and putting them on your board. Each turn, you will either take a card or you'll play a card. When you play a card, it lets you take two reef pieces and put them somewhere on your board and then score for different patterns that you have. So I want to, if I have a card that gives me two points for every set of two purple reef pieces next to each other, I want to get as many of those possible before I play that card. But this other card, when I play it, to put purple pieces on, will score for something else that I needed to play this card for. You're trying to figure out the right order to play cards. Really works well. Again, it's one of those games that's really easy to play, really easy to teach, but offers a lot more strategy than you think. And it looks pretty on the table. That's Reef. Now, my final pick here is definitely for that family that's got the little ones running around. One or two of them, possibly more. Then you wanna, uh, you're going to want to get Rhino Hero Super Battle. 
Rhino Hero Super Battle is a stacking game. It's a dexterity game in which you are building up specific structures with these cardboard pillars and putting your little, uh, you know, heroes on top of those, fighting if you land on the same level as someone else, hanging off little cardboard monkeys off of the edge of these, trying not to have this entire thing collapse as you are maneuvering, moving yourself sometimes up a level, sometimes down because you lost a fight. Lots going on. Now, this is going to be great even if the little ones aren't playing. It's just that fun and silly as long as you want to play a silly family game. But if you are playing with the younger kids in the family, this is going to be a fantastic pick while keeping the adults entertained as well. So Rhino Hero Super Battle. My last pick for the family is a game called Queen Domino. Now Queen Domino is a little bit of the heavier sister to King Domino, which actually won the Spiel des Jahres uh, last year, I think it was. I believe so. And uh, now King Domino is probably your basic pick if you want just generally what it sounds like you're playing dominoes with different kinds of land areas you're trying to match them together get a get get the uh, highest area of each land and score the points and so forth and so on queen domino adds a few decisions on top of that so if king domino sounds a little bit too light for you, Queen Domino will, will be your sweet spot because it follows the same idea that King Domino has in matching those different areas of uh, land types around. Uh, but you have other things you can, purchasing knights and, and, and all of this other kind of stuff that go along with running a kingdom, I suppose. But anyway, Queen Domino is a great game, my favorite of the two. So that's why it's my pick for this family list. One of the simplest games we've mentioned, Dinosaur Tea Party. Now, you may have played a game called um, Guess Who at some point, and that's what Dinosaur Tea Party is. There's a bunch of dinosaurs in the middle of the table, all drinking tea, because that's what dinosaurs do, apparently. Mm -hmm. You are of one of those. People are trying to guess which one, so they might say, are you eating cake, or are you, is your dinosaur have scales on it? You're asking questions back and forth to each other, trying to narrow it down. But there's a possibility one person always lies when they answer questions. The possibility one person says a lie one time and then a truth the next time. So that adds a little bit of uh, fuzziness to it, but it's just really fun. It's a very light deduction game with some really gorgeous cards and artwork. Dinosaur Tea Party. All these games, like we said, are available online. Check out Cool Stuff Inc. Uh, cool Stuff Games to, to buy these. The, I, these are fun games. If you know a family and you want to give them a game, there's a good chance you can give them one of these games and they can probably figure out the rules from the things, yeah. or you can play it with them. You'll have right. a lot of fun. I would buy all these as a Christmas gift easily. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's it. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Have a good one. Sam Healy. Merry Christmas. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.